Hey, my name is Chad. Welcome to this video where we are going to once again try to dive into a slight issue I might be having with primers. This is something weird that I noticed uh, after my last match and it's kind of just a dumb luck of even noticing it. And I don't really know if it is something that is anything to be concerned about because more than likely it's been happening for quite a while. But I think I've thought of a way that I can test it. And if everything goes good, hopefully in this little test, I can eliminate this from something that I think about in the back of my head. And from what I can tell, it has had no effect on uh, my firing, my ability to hit a target, anything like that in a negative way. But it's just something that I notice and now I think about it unless I have my mind on a hundred other things. So we're going to try and uh, investigate this a little more and see if we can find an answer. So this is my uh, CPS, my competition primer seeder. This is what I usually use when I am seeding my primers into my brass. Now, typically what I do to just verify that everything is pressed all the way in and flush, I'll kind of let them roll to the side on a solid flat surface like this and boom. Okay, you see that? They pretty much just stop. So there's nothing protruding out the bottom to give it a rounded edge to kind of roll around. So they just, oops, if I drop it straight up, but they just plop down and stop kind of immediately. After my ammo is loaded and has been uh, sitting for a few days, like getting ready for a match, it will kind of roll around a little bit extra. So to me, that's telling me that my primer is just uh, like just barely proud. So it's just sticking out a little bit. Now, all of my groups and stuff were set up with it at a certain measurement. So I'm wondering if I go another 1,000 or 2,000 deeper, is that going to stop that from happening? Because obviously my, <laughs> here and then my fired brass kind of does the same thing. I don't know what is causing that, but it's just something I noticed and it kind of drives me crazy. Now these are some of my lot number twos that I have already got loaded and primers are set to the same depth that I've been using for a while. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm load up either five to 10 of those and they're already ready to go. What I'm going to do is every turn on this primer seeder is 1000 deeper. So it's got good solid clicks. So you know when you're seeding deeper. I'm thinking I'm going to go one click deeper and seat 10 and go another click deeper, seat 10 more. And that should get me pretty close. Now, the other thing to take into consideration is how tall your primers are. And as I was doing some preparations, yeah, these are right there about 120. Some of them are 119. So the height of my primer is right about the same uh, depth of my primer pocket. So this is not the best way to measure these. Um, obviously I need to get a better tool for doing this. So like that one's giving me right about the same, <laughs> right about a 120. So from what I can tell, my primer uh, pocket hole is right about the same size as my primers themselves. So I don't want to seat them too deep in and like squish them down. Um, I'm afraid of negative effects from that. This is just something that I'm going to have to test to find out for myself. So in order to do that, we're going to use the uh, primer filler and get some in a tube and switch out from my press to my primer seeder, get these seated. Then I'm just going to drop powder bullets and we're going to go test them tomorrow. I really want to see on paper is my group changing size. If it's getting larger, then I think I'm just going to deal with the wobble. Really, I'm throwing this video out because I want more input from you guys out in the community. So let me know. Okay, so this knob here, you can see we're marked deeper. So we're going to go one turn. Click. All right, so we got one deeper. I've already gone one step deeper. Now this will be two steps deeper. I've got my brass marked as one and two and then zero. So my original point, one thousandths deeper and these are gonna be two thousandths deeper. 
and then we'll just run our shuttle and get these tin primed and then I'm going to get them powdered and drop a bullet in them and then we'll go test them and see if there's any actual difference or you know where is the point that things start to tighten up or fall apart I don't know but we're going to find out welcome welcome we're down here at the range and it is pretty cold but I did manage to get out here before it got too dark for once so I'm quite proud of myself I'm probably going to have to finish in the dark because that just seems to be how things go but I have got uh, 10 rounds each loaded up at the uh, setting that I had my primer seated at 1,000 steeper and then another thousand steeper. I kind of want to see just what happens um, between the zeros and the twos, if the group's going to stay the same, if my speeds are going to stay close to the same. I'm using my other batch of brass because I need to get more firings on it. So this is going to be a comparative test to themselves more than comparing it to the load that I've been using with the primer seating depth where I have it set now. So I'm just going to fire uh, one bullet get a little bit of warmth down my barrel then I'm going to load up 10 at zero reset my chrono and I'm going to get my average speeds and SDES all that information shoot through these 10 see what the group looks like go through the next group of 10 go through the next group of 10 and then we'll probably talk about it back at the house because it's going to get cold and just shooting groups is kind of boring so I won't subject you to all of that we'll catch up back at the house. Hey, if you notice something weird and you want to go out and test it instead of just hope it all works out, go ahead and get subscribed right down below here because if I see something that I don't like, I just can't let it go and I've got to go try and figure out if there's a better way to do things. So if you like to do that, probably fit in pretty well around here. Love to see you on future videos. Okay, so it got very cold out there, but I managed to get all those 30 rounds shot through and tested, uh, at least to verify that, you know, whatever I'm seeing is actually something that I need to be concerned about. And I had slightly uh, unexpected results, but I wanted to run them by everybody out there that has a lot more experience than me. and. Tell me what you think about this. So we'll start with just the couple of groups. So first one down here that was shot with my usual uh, primer seating depth. So I'm aiming right here. I've got my scope turned like down an extra five uh, tenths. So that way I can stay aiming pretty close to the same area, but impact down here and not eat up my aiming zone. So aiming here but you know that's about i guess an average -ish, average ish group especially for how cold my hands were getting uh this was seated 1000th deeper and that actually tightened up pretty good i don't know if i was just more in the zone right there but i'm pretty happy with that and then the next one which would have been 2000th deeper than what i had been running uh started opening up a little bit again but i mean all in all group wise I think I've already determined through my powder test that uh, my rifle just shoots pretty good and I seem to do a decent job at least loading for it. So, I mean, any of these groups, I would totally be good uh, running a PRS match with them. So I don't think that's going to tell me very much, but I'm glad I chronoed them. So that's where it gets a little interesting. So at my original setting, um, this is using my other lot of brass. And I've noticed the speeds are different from what I've been using for my matches. And I think I'd, I need to just run them through a few more uh, firings and see if they, you know, loosen up and even out, get closer to the other ones, or if they're just going to be too different. And I'm not going to be able to use this as one big 200 uh, case lot uh, and just keep these separate. It's going to come into uh, effect here pretty soon because I've decided that this year I'm going to take some Saturdays off work and start going to more matches. I've located a few around and my work, I don't know, I like to work, so I prefer to just work every day that I can, but they want me to take days off. So I'm just gonna try and max out 
as many matches that I can possibly make this year. So fingers crossed, we'll see how that goes. But at my original uh, primer seating depth, my average speed was 29.56. So I ran from 29.49 up to 67, had an ES of 18 and a SD of 6.1. So plenty decent numbers, I'm thinking. Then at the 1,000 deeper, uh, had a average speed of 29.57, ran from 29.49.4 up to 64.4. So my ES was only 15 there, so cleaned that up a little bit, and my SD was 5.5, a little bit better on that number also. Now also where it gets interesting, at a 1,000 deeper again, so 2,000 deeper from where I had been seeding my primers. My speeds jumped up to 29.72 and ranged from 29.57 up to 29.88. So that was a 31.1 ES. So pretty much double. So 1,000 deeper on my primer seeding depth and I doubled my extreme spread. And then my SD was 9.9. .9, so up from the 5.5, that's almost double again. So those numbers tell me that I think I need to just back off one uh, from where I've got my primer seeder set right now. To me, that's what makes sense. I want to hear from you guys. Um, I'm going to let this brass sit for a little while. So I went ahead and marked all my cases like zero, uh, one, and two. So that way I know, you know which ones were seeded at the same setting I've been using, 1,000th deeper and 2,000th deeper. Um, I'm gonna let them kind of sit for a few days, check them next weekend and do that same wobble test and see if they are still kind of sitting proud a little bit. I may have just been a, a little bit low on where I had my primer seating depth. And I just needed to go one more click in and I think that's gonna be the answer. So I know my way of testing if my primers are seating uh, a little bit proud of completely flush is probably not the most conventional. Uh, I call it the wobble test, but I don't know. That's kind of what I got to work with right now. I guess I need to maybe invest in one of those better primer seating depth measuring tools. And that would tell me for sure. But I wanted to bring this out to the community here. Get y'all's opinion. Let me know. What do you think? Am I worrying about something that has absolutely no real bearing on how things perform? Uh, do I need to test further? Is this not enough? Just doing a couple thousand more on a small round count test. Um, I'm open to doing uh, some more testing, but also got to think that I've got to get prepared for my next match coming up. So that's why I wanted to get this done this weekend. Find out if there was any like major changes that I would have to account for uh, when I go like, do I need to change my bullet seating depth? Anything like that. Um, from what I can tell, I think I'm good with just going 1,000th deeper and maybe run that for the next match, see what everything looks like after. I haven't had any problems with anything firing, any primers popping out, nothing weird and crazy. It's just one of those things I saw and now it's been sticking in my head and I wanted to get the correct answer here. Like I've said before, if it's possible to test things and find the best answer, I prefer to always do that. Uh, it just keeps my mind a little settled. I do tend to overanalyze things, especially if I have time to think about them. So I just gotta stay super busy and not worry about too much stuff. Well, I think that's all for this one. I just wanted to see what would happen if I start going a little bit deeper on my primer seating depth. I think I did find that going too deep definitely causes some adverse effects, at least on the chrono numbers, but on target, I didn't really see any major changes. So please let me know what you think down in the comments looking for anybody's input. If there's more things I need to test or check or measure, please let me know. I'm happy to do that. And I want to find the best solution for this little quirky problem that I discovered. Well, thank you for hanging out with me while I do this little test. I really do appreciate everybody that watches my videos. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.